Okay, question number seven from M1, June 2018, International A-Level paper. Um, a washing line A, B, C, D is fixed at the points A and D. There are two heavy items of clothing hanging on the washing line. One is fixed at B and the other one is also fixed at C. The washing, shine, the, sorry, the washing line is modeled as a light and extensible string. Um, the item at B is modeled as a particle of mass 3 kilograms. So this is 3 kilograms. This one is M kilograms. Okay, so this has got a weight of 3G newtons acting down. This has got a weight of MG newtons acting down. The section AB makes an angle of alpha with the horizontal, where tan of alpha is 3 quarters. So the tan of alpha is 3 quarters. So if we had a, a triangle, this would be alpha, this would be 3, this would be 4, this would be 5. So therefore the sine of alpha would be opposite over hypotenuse, 3 fifths, sorry, 3 fifths. And the cosine of alpha would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be four fifths. Okay. Um, and then it says that the section CD makes an angle beta with the ho horizontal with tan of beta is 12 over 5. Okay. So if you have beta, this is beta. So it's, got, it's like 12 over 5. So this is 12 and this is 5. So that's 12, that's 5, that's 13. 5, 12, 13 triangle. 5 squared, 25 plus 144, 169 squared, 169 is 13. Okay, so we can say that the, we know the tan of beta is 12 over 5. That means the sine of beta is opposite over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. And the cosine of beta is 5 over 13. Okay, so that's the information that we have. Um, now, important point here is the fact that even though it's one light inextensible string, the fact that this mass and this mass, they are fixed on the string. They're not free to, to slide. It's not like a bead where the string passes freely through, through them or a pulley where the, there's no friction and the string passes f uh, freely through. These are actually fixed at these points. So therefore, the tension in this part of the string, the tension in this part of the string and the tension in these parts of the string will be different. So this is the tension in BC. This will be the same along here, in the same section, but the tension in this part of the string won't be the same as the tension in this part, nor will the tension in this part be the same as in these two parts. So that's what you've got to take into account when something is fixed in place, that's what is going to um, happen. So now, we want to find the tension in AB. Okay, so let's take this section here. Let's take this section here on its own and deal with this section here. Let's put it down here. Okay, we want to find the tension in AB. So what we can do is we can resolve the forces uh, horizontally and vertically to help us find the tension in AB. So if I can basically, all I need to do is, is resolve them horizontally, This in, sorry, vertically for this because um, this won't have an effect in the vertical direction. This is horizontal. But this, you can say the tension in AB resolved vertically going away from theta, uh, alpha. Going away from alpha means it's going to be sine. So it's TAB times the sine of alpha is equal to 3G newtons. Okay, so the sine of alpha was the 3 fifths. So you have 3 fifths times tension in AB is equal to 3 G Newtons, the 3's cancel, multiply both 5 by 5, so the tension in AB is going to be 5 G Newtons, which in terms of, we'll just use this, 9.8, and 9.8, I'll just use this calculator, 9.8 times 5, that gives us 49 Newtons. Okay, that's the tension in AB. Uh, then it says find the tension in BC. So we can use the same diagram here and just resolve the forces horizontally. So we know that the tension in BC is equal to the tension in AB times cosine of alpha. Times the cosine of alpha. And we know the cosine of alpha is four fifths. Okay, so we can say the tension in BC is going to be 49 times four-fifths. Okay, so you have 49 times 
um, four fifths, which gives you 39.2 newtons. Okay, we could have also found this in terms of G. It would have been 5G times 4, but you would, you would end up with 4G newtons. Okay, and you can see that will give you the same answer. 4 times 9.8 gives you the same answer. Okay, um, but they gave us the forces in terms of newtons without G, so it gave us this in terms of newtons, so we're going to do the same thing in the end. There's no problem either way. So you can write this as 39.2. Or you can even write it as 39 as we used G. Okay, both of them are correct. You can put 4G, you can put 5G, you can put 49, you can put 39.2 as you wish. Now, for the next part of the question, find the value of M. Okay, so I need to deal with this part. So let me take this part here. Let me take this section here and deal with this section on its own. Okay, so let's resolve the forces. Now, I know tension in BC is already given, already found. The tension in BC was 4G Newtons. I'll call it 4G Newtons for now. So this is 4G Newtons, this part. Okay, um, so now I can find what the tension in CD is by resolving horizontally. And then I can find what the, ten the, the mass is. So let's resolve horizontally. I can say the tension in CD is equal to, oh no, I haven't resolved it. Tension in CD times cosine, times cosine of beta is equal to 4G newtons, tension in, in BC. Okay, so the tension in CD times, now the cosine of beta was 5 over 13. 5 over 13. So this is times 5 over 13 is equal to 4G. So the tension in CD is going to be 13 times 4 over 5. 13 times 4 over 5G. Okay, so 13 times 4 divided by 5, which gives you 52 over 5G. Tension CD is 52 over 5G. Okay, that's not our answer though. We have to find the value of M. This is a step to our answer. To find the value of M, we can now say the tension in CD, which is this times, and you got to go, you're going now away. Whoops. You're going away from the angle, so it's going to be sine of beta times the sine of beta is equal to mg. And the tension in CD is 52 over 5g, and the sine of beta. The sine of beta is 12 over 13. Okay, 12 over 13. So that's times 12 over 13 equals mg. The g's cancel out. So we're left with this as our answer. I think 13 goes into 52 four times. So you have m equals 4 times 12 over 5. Okay, let's just do that. 52 over 5 times 12 over 13 and that gives you 48 over 5 which is 9.6 9.6 and this is in kilograms 9.6 kilograms and that's the answer for M okay and there we have the answer to this question